Accounting Equation and Excel. Set up Excel worksheet. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation in Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Well, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. Or you could just build your own worksheet as we go or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet, but we'll basically be moving forward with a template adding to the template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We have the general outline of the template with our accounting equation summary up top and the more detailed information giving us the accounting equation up top, the subcategories underneath it, and then the accounts underneath that. We want to do a little bit more formatting to go along with and set up for our longer practice problem where we're going to imagine we first start off not just from scratch because oftentimes many businesses when they start their accounting system they've already started their business right and so you're going to have to draw in the beginning balances which is a common problem we want to practice from a journal entry or accounting equation standpoint here and think of the similarities that would happen if you were to enter data into an uh, accounting software such as a QuickBook or a Zero or something like so that. So in other words, normally if you started just from scratch, what's the first thing you would do to start the business? You would take money out of your personal account and put it into a business account so that we could separate the personal and the business. That would be what we would like to do. In practice, do people often do that? Often not because they just start doing their own business. They just start taking money out of their checking account and we don't have as great a separation between business and personal as we would like from the bookkeeper standpoint. But we do the best we can to, to make that separation because we have to in order to judge the performance of both of those things in their respective goal oriented categories. So for example, the business, we need to be tracking revenue to see if it's achieving the goal of revenue generation separate from the personal side of things where we're basically tracking how much we spend generally to try to not go bankrupt and try to have a, enough spending to be to be happy, right? A happy spending level, <laughs> basically two different objectives Therefore, we would like to basically break out our books so that we can achieve both of those objectives and look at them and analyze them separately. So that's ideally what we would like to do. But again, a lot of times people have already started their bookkeeping or started their business, and then they're going to start their accounting software that was possibly done in a prior accounting software or possibly done kind of generically, not, not quite as detailed as they would like to do, but they're getting to the point where they need to focus on it a little bit more. So that means that we're gonna have these beginning balances. So if I have like the checking account is 25,000, accounts receivable is 20,500, inventory has 2,896, uh, accumulated depreciation 7,005, furniture and fixture, pp and &E, 75,000 accounts payable, visa, loan payable, uh, and opening, which I'm not sure if that's spelled, <laughs> opening balance equity, and then owner's equity. Notice 
what we would like to do when we start a new business is usually start the entire accounting system in a new period, which usually would mean a new year, often a calendar year, but at least a fiscal year. In other words, most businesses, especially small businesses, follow a calendar year, January to December, which is often what you kind of have to do for taxes in the United States if you're a sole proprietorship. Although, you could try to have a fiscal year that would be different, and there's rationales for doing that, such as your natural income levels uh, being on different time frames or something like that. But uh, the, the idea is that we want to have one accounting system for the entire year. What we do not want to be able, have to be doing is, uh, is adding together accounts from two different accounting systems to come up with a year's worth of data to do our reporting for that year and possibly the, the uh, taxes for that year. So that means when we start a new accounting system, we, we might still start it not at the end of the year possibly, but when we start it, then we're gonna run it parallel to the other accounting system possibly for a little bit of time so that we have two accounting systems which are overlapping, which might give us some assurance that we're that we're on the right track so for example if you started the accounting system in uh march then you might try to enter all the data for the first three months into the new accounting system rather than just starting as of march and having only part of the year in the new accounting system and part in the old accounting system that would be so then you're running parallel for three months and then you're and then you're going forward from there. Ideally, we'd like to start the new accounting system, you know, towards the end of the year, entering the beginning balances from the prior year as my beginning balances in the current year. So we would like to say, I'm going to start my new accounting system in January if we have a calendar year system. That also helps because that means that we don't have any income statement accounts because we're going to imagine that the last year is done income statement has rolled over into the equity accounts which would be retained earnings for a corporation or the um, owner's equity for a sole proprietorship or capital accounts for a partnership and therefore we just need the balance sheet accounts which we call the permanent accounts in accounting and then and so that's what we're going to be entering so we're going to imagine we're going to start at the beginning of the year our accounting system and these are just the beginning of the year numbers don't worry about the year up here we're just going to whatever the generic year is as of this point in time this is the end of the last year beginning of this year now there's going to be some issues if we have some accounts that are going to be impacted such as accounts receivable because it has a sub ledger that we're going to have to track that's going to cause us problems we have uh, depreciation that's going to cause us problems because I need a subledger tracking the, the items of uh, property, plants, and equipment, which might not be done in the software. It might be done in tax software, but we're going to need it. Accounts payable, we're going to need to track by who we owe the money to, by vendor in software terms, typically. And the visa, we might need to do bank reconciliations. The checking account, we might have un outstanding checks. We need to do bank reconciliations for them and uh, so on. So each of these accounts then I can't just enter them as a journal entry because if I was to do so I would lose the the tying out of the sub ledgers that are going to be needed accounting software might not even let you do a journal entry for the entire beginning balance because it's going to say hey I want at least the customers for accounts receivable and the vendors for accounts payable therefore our strategy is going to be that we enter each of these balances one at a time the other side of the transaction going to equity after having entered all of these beginning balances the equity balance should balance out to what it should be all right so that's the idea so i'm going to basically adjust our worksheet to tie out to these accounts which are from the prior accounting system and try to adjust our sub ledgers in particular our inventory sub ledger all right let's go back on over so let's go to the blank tab and say, all right, so we've got the, the same data entry. So that's fine. Our accounting equation is fine. But then uh, over here, I have, oh, what I'd like to do, I don't have my running balance over here. So I want to add another column and put in my double check numbers over here for uh, to make sure that we're in balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor on column 
let's put it on column K and then right click, it's gonna insert to the left. So I'm gonna go uh, insert, uh, insert, boom. Okay, so there we have it. Then I'm gonna go to column J, make this a little bit wider and I'm gonna put my check figure and if it comes out to be zero, then I'm in balance. So how am I gonna do that? It's gonna be equal to assets minus brackets, the liabilities plus the equity, close up the brackets. If that comes out to be zero, then I'm in balance. If it's something other than zero, then there's a problem. I'm gonna leave some leeway for, uh, for rounding errors. So I'm gonna say if it's between negative two and two, I want this to turn green and I'm gonna say that's okay. But if it's greater than neg or less than negative two or greater than two, I want it to turn red. So to do that, I'll be doing conditional formatting. So let's go to the conditional formatting up top and I wanna make it between. If it's between negative two and two, then I want it to be green, indicating it's good to go. We can move forward. Okay, but I'm gonna say conditional formatting. If it's greater than positive two, then I want it to turn red, which is the default, okay? And then if it's less than negative two, I also want it to turn red. Okay, let's test it out. If this is negative three, it turns red. And I can't see it because it's too big of a number. Whatever, it's red. If it's three, it turns red. Okay, so now let's bring it back to the formula, which is this minus brackets, this plus this. Close up the brackets. All right, so then I'm going to put some brackets around that. Let's put some borders around it. And I'll copy that down as our check figure. Boom. All right, check figures in place. All right, so then the next thing I want to do is uh, move on over here. And the first thing I'm gonna add is the loan payable. So instead of having sales tax right now, because we have this in the liability side, we've got accounts payable, we've got visa, and we've got loan payable. Uh, which I'm going to try to spell correctly when I put it over here. So we're going to say accounts payable, Visa. I should probably call it a credit card, but I'll just call it Visa credit card. Credit card. Now it's too long. Credit card. Let's say credit C. I don't want to make it too long. And then loan payable. Now I was debating putting loan payable as a long-term portion, but as we do that data input, we have to figure out whether we want to put it into a short-term or long-term category. So I'll get into that more uh, later and, and we'll break out a long-term portion rather than having everything in the current because the loan will be dependent upon whether it's short-term or long-term loan. So we have draws, we've got owner's equity, sales, insurance, miscellaneous, office. So I'm going to keep all of these. Now the income statement, we're not entering anything for the income statement on our beginning balances because we closed it out last year we're imagining but and by the way uh you might when you start a new accounting system i might go back to last year and enter all of the data for last year so that i so that i have all the data in the current accounting system why would i do that because then i can run comparative reports from the current accounting system that's great but it's more tedious to do that and it's more likely that you're gonna come up with errors as you try to pull in all the data. So what we're gonna do instead is say, look, I'm gonna use the prior accounting software, whatever I was using for the prior accounting system, I'm gonna enter the beginning balances into my new system as of this point in time, transferring those beginning balances and the related detail for the sub ledgers. And then I'm just gonna build, in essence, the general ledger accounts for my current accounting system based on my current detail and data meaning that will be cleaner in some ways, but will not allow me to run comparative reports from the current system. So there's kind of pros and cons on which way you'd want to do it. Oftentimes, I think this might be the way to go a lot of times for small businesses in particular, because a lot of them don't have well-crafted books. And your goal now is to say, I'm going to do it good. I'm going to fix the problems in the past and that means that I don't want to try to draw in all of the information that was messed up in the past. I want to draw a line and say, I'm going to make it correct from this point 
going forward and the mess that was in the prior years if i have to go back and deal with that because of taxes or something uh, that makes me go back to those years i'm going to have to go and sift through the the prior year stuff which was kind of a mess right because we're assuming that we're going to fix the problems by drawing the line and in, in the sand and making it right going forward all right so then then uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the inventory now i'm gonna make a more complicated sub ledger for inventory remembering that inventory is going to follow a flow assumption which might be a first in first out flow assumption or a weighted average uh, flow assumption for us it's going to be basically the same uh, no matter which flow assumption we use because we're not going to be changing really the values of the inventory but i'm going to try to explain as we go why this is important uh because because the value of the inventory is going to going to be changing so this is going to be dealing with this line item of inventory now when we put that inventory on the books we have to decide are we going to track inventory within the accounting system on a perpetual inventory system if we are we've got to enter all of the inventory items into the system giving the cost of, of the of the inventory and then the system's going to apply a flow assumption usually first in first out or weighted average okay if not that inventory might be supported by off out of our accounting system bookkeeping system that we're doing on our own in excel or possibly with other accounting software which we just adjust to the accounting system periodically based on a physical count uh, and that would be another way that you can do that again this is something you really got to keep in mind when you build your accounting system and take on your clients remembering don't let the clients dictate to you exact you, obviously you're working for them you're trying to make them happy but you want to make you want to <laughs> pick clients that that align to your business model and be clear about that right so the what is your business model for inventory how detailed of clients do you want to be specializing in with inventory okay so i'm going to go to the home tab we're going to go to the format painter and put this in the am okay all right so now we're going to have to list out each inventory item and i'm going to have and i'm going to put my check figure up top this is going to be the sum of all the inventory items so i'm going to go then to the next column and i'm going to say we're going to have a purchases purchases set of columns and i'm going to say we're going to have a unit a u a unit cost let me see if i have this yeah let's do that okay unit cost and then and then we've got the total cost and then we're going to have the next category will be cost of goods sold and once again we're going to have the same kind of concept of the units the unit cost and then the total cost and then i'm going to set up ending inventory which is going to have the same categories of unit unit cost and total cost okay so then let's let's i'm going to make this bit like green purchases i'll make it green and white and then and then i'll make this whole bit black so we'll make this home tab i'm trying to format it some something that looks nice black white and then we're going to center it and we're going to wrap the text so i can make these a little bit smaller all right and then the this these let's make these orange for cost of goods sold for this category so i'm going to go home tab format painter and we'll make it orange orange and white let's say and then this category i'll make blue so i'm going to go do it and we'll make it dark blue and maybe i should i should probably make ah whatever i don't want to get too crazy with it that's uh, my color coding i was thinking i should make this blue because that's like the equity side i kind of like that idea let's, let's actually do that that's a good idea i'll make that dark blue <laughs> and this is good it should be another kind of green right maybe this should be the ending inventory uh so maybe this should be the lighter green okay now i'm getting 
there's a lot of meaning behind the color scheme here. You have to get it right. Okay, and so this is going to be the dark green. So because this is going to be what's reflected on the balance sheet as an asset, what I'm thinking, and this is going to increase the assets, therefore it's kind of green. And then these are, are what's going to decrease the equity section, which is why it's blue, because that's what I color coded the income statement to be. See, makes perfect sense. Let's put some borders around it. That's a darn good color scheme. I'm glad I thought about it intently. There's more meaning in that than in the current Star Wars lightsaber color colors, which mean nothing. It's ridiculous. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting angry at Star Wars all of a sudden. Because it's ridiculous. That's why. Don't. Okay. <laughs> why is the lightsaber that color? Well, I don't know. It's just because it just we thought it'd be neat. You need to have a reason. You need to have a reason. Okay. You can't just Oh my goodness. What is going on here? All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put the name of the product, which I'm just going to call an ELP <clears throat> this time. We'll get into what that is later, but let's call that one. Let's make, let's make that. Should I make it just black and white? I guess that one should be a distinct color. I feel like let's make that the dark green again. And all right. Okay, and then, uh, then, and then, so then we're gonna fill in this bit down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's 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 go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Over to here. This is gonna be my data input cells. Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's make it down to eight. Why is eight so important? That's because that's what my worksheet says. That's what my template has. Okay, so I'm going to make it this blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors. Standard color wheel. There's the blue. So I'm just going to make that my data input field and put borders around it. Okay. All right, so I think that's it. So when we buy the inventory, then we're going to... And maybe I'll make this like this date field green too because it's kind of like so then then these are symmetrical looking okay all right all right so now so 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 uh so now when we per i should probably center this across i could center this across, but i don't need to it looks good like that so now when we purchase the inventory let's make this a little tighter we could tighten this whole thing up a bit Let's tighten it up a bit and that's important muy importante okay is that too tight this one can all right there we go all right so when we buy the inventory uh we're going to purchase it and then that's going to impact the ending inventory and then when we sell the inventory we're going to have to have it go down and that's going to impact the ending inventory. Okay, so we'll get more into that later, but I'm just going to copy this across uh, a few times. So let's put one, let's do, let's copy it down first. I'm going to copy this whole thing and just paste it. Boom. Paste it down here, but this I'm going to call an EPSP for the name. And then I'm just going to copy this from the skinny on over to the AW copy that and I'll paste that right here boom and that's going to be so we'll have different inventory items so I'm going to name this set of inventory items is going to be I'm going to call it a uh, 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 an E P R we'll get into these inventory names later and this is going to be a I'm going to call it D U K that's not a K Okay, and then let's copy this over again from the skinny. Going to go from the skinny to the BH copy and paste to the BI. And then this is going to be a GIUSA. Make this a little wider so I could see it. GIUSA. And then this is going to be, this is the same name. Let's just delete it. 
for now. Okay. And so that looks good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the total here for my check figure. So that I'm going to add up all of the sub ledgers. Then I'm going to put the total on the bottom. I'm going to copy it all the way down. So we'll put the, so I'm going to add up all the totals, which is going to be equal to the bottom number here plus 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 finally the bottom number here. So here's the formula. The formula just adding up the bottom corner number on all of our inventory worksheets. And then when that zero, I want the same formatting for it to be, I want it to be uh, zero if it's between negative two and two, and then turn red if it's greater than two or less than negative two. So I'm gonna right click and do my do our conditional formatting thing. So we're gonna go format cells and wait, 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 that's not how you do it. Home tab, uh, conditional formatting if it's between negative two and two, not 23 in the world. That's too far. You've gone too far. You have gone too far. Okay, I f I'll fix it. Just tell, you don't have to get all crazy. I've gone too far and now I brought, I brought it back the other way. And then if it's less than, if it's greater than uh, two, then I want it to turn red. And then if it's less than uh, negative two, then I want you to make it turn red. All right, let's test it out. So if I make it negative three, it turns red. If I make it three, it turns red. Undo, undo, back to green. Mui B to the N. All right. So then I'm just going to call this inventory subsidiary ledger. So we'll call it an inventory subsidiary ledger. We'll make this black and white. And let's just copy that name. Well, let's just say this is going to equal the same name over here. So we know this is the inventory subsidiary ledger across the board. Duh, inventory subsidiary ledger. And should I make that green? Because it's kind of an asset account ledger. Maybe, maybe I make this dark green instead. Let's see how that looks. See how that looks. Because that has meaning, man. It has meaning. Unlike the Star Wars lightsabers. Where they just throw it in there willy-nilly. Why did you why is why did you make it? Because we thought it looked it went with the dress or something like that. What? What? I, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad it went with it. But I mean, I've, I've been sitting here thinking that there's some kind of deep meaning behind what's happening here. And it's just like, no, there's no, there's nothing. There's nothing to it. I, <laughs> oh, for God crying out loud all right so there we have it okay I think that's good that'll be our baseline for our inventory all right 